Okay. Welcome. That was a uh, fantastic lunch. Uh, we had a great time in the newcomers' lunch for those of you who uh, who didn't make it in there. But thank you very much to our sponsor for the main lunch, which was uh, Verisign. Thank you. Yeah. I think you'd be hard pressed to find uh, fried chicken that good anywhere, uh, let alone in uh, in the Roosevelt Hotel in uh, New Orleans. So. Um, this is a fantastic meeting. We have, uh, we have great turnout. Uh, the amount of newcomers that we have is phenomenal. Uh, I was extremely impressed uh, by how many people showed up. Uh, as well, the tutorials this morning, <clears throat> uh, the IPv6 tutorial, DNS, or, or sorry, BGP, uh, network timing, and OpenFlow, which for those of you who had travel difficulties getting in here, as, as many did uh, due to weather, uh, you could appreciate the fact that the speaker managed to pull that tutorial off via Skype, which, uh, which was extremely impressive that, uh, you know, who, who knew that the, uh, the internet could actually be for education? Crazy, right? So, um, so the program committee is primarily responsible for putting together uh, what you'll see up here as well as the tutorials and the tracks. Uh, many of them are here in the room. Some of them couldn't make it to this meeting. Uh, but, you know, feel free to find me or anyone else on this list. We have um, white uh, badges on the bottom of our main badge that identify us as members of the program committee. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, would like to present something in the future, you know, whatever that may be, uh, please do that. You can also email us. Uh, and what we really ask as well is, is that you fill out the surveys. We've compressed them down a bit for this meeting. We recognize that they're, we're running a little long. And uh, we hope that we can uh, get more info out of them about how to make these meetings better for everyone. So I already mentioned tutorials. Those are gone. However, some of them were recorded. And so they will be available on the website in a couple weeks. Uh, we hope that you'll go back and, and review that content. Uh, general session here in this room, tracks in the afternoons, and then obviously the socials. We've got, I believe, House of Blues tonight uh, and Steamboat Natchez tomorrow and uh, um, Quarter Two Sisters, thank you, on Wednesday. So, uh, you know, those are great times to get out and meet people. Those of you who are in the newcomers uh, lunch, you know, will recognize Sylvie's challenge to go out and meet new people, and that's a, a great way to do it. Um, on the tracks, one other quick note, we were, you know, told that there's been some cutbacks related to joint techs in the R&E world. Uh, if you are part of that world and would like to have a informal boff, birds of a feather, meet up here, Michael Sinatra, who is back there with his hand up, uh, would be happy to organize that, so please go find Michael. So, in here, right, this is the plenary space. Uh, outside to the right and directly across, there's open seating and break space. Uh, when you're not in here, feel free to use that. All we ask is that when you transition between the two spaces that you're respectful of the speakers uh, and try not to make a lot of noise by the doors. Uh, there's the Aaron help desk, you know, thank you so much to Aaron. They do so much for this community. Uh, and they're also out there to help you uh, when in your interactions with them. So please, if you need help with anything from IPv4, IPv6, ASNs, you know, they're out there to help give you advice. And, uh, you know, I know I've personally used them before to, to troubleshoot tickets that I've had open with them. And they're immensely helpful. Uh, Ripe Atlas probes, I'm actually going to present something about that. Uh, in a little bit, uh, so I'll skip over that bullet point right now. And then, as I mentioned, uh, please fill out the surveys. There's a daily giveaway. Uh, do, we, do we know what the giveaway is today? I, anyone? I don't have that in my notes. Okay, so we'll let you know what that is shortly. So, posted on each microphone is general guidelines for Q&A. Uh, these are just meant to keep uh, basically order within the room. We like, you know, we like it when our speakers feel, feel welcome. You know, always feel free to ask challenging questions. This is not designed to change that in any way, shape, or form. But we do want it to be a level playing field for everyone. 
Uh, the other note is that we do have an attendee charter. This was newly adopted. Uh, you can see it at the URL below. The slides will be online with that URL. You can also find it under the governance section of the new NADOG website. And so we suggest that everyone review this and become familiar with it. Uh, it really shouldn't change how anything operates at NADOG, but it was time to document it. So uh, we've had a couple losses in this community uh, over uh, the past few months. Uh, personally, I wanted to recognize the loss of uh, Eric Shipcaro from Telex. Um, he, uh, he passed about a month ago now. And um, he was a big champion of this community uh, during my time at Telex. He knew the importance of, <clears throat> excuse me, the importance of Nanog, and was always, you know, sure to make sure that we uh, sponsored Nanog in whatever way we possibly could. And so, you know, Telex has been uh, has been a host. They've sponsored various events. You know, Eric was was behind a lot of that, and he will definitely be missed. Um, I'd like to also uh, let Betty speak about Bob Stratton from Aaron. Thanks, Dave. Um, it, it goes without saying that the American Registry of Internet Numbers is a great partner to Nanog. And uh, in 2010, 2011, when Nanog embarked on creating a community-owned organization, and we needed to be able to seek some financial early some some early financial assistance, Bob Stratton uh, was one of those individuals on behalf of his board of directors to make sure that checks and funding was coming through to make sure that we could survive. And uh, this past winter, we lost Bob Stratton as well. And uh, I know our his colleagues at Aaron miss him every day, and I just wanted to acknowledge the importance of his work in the internet in general and the importance that we all enjoy today um, at Nanog. So he'll be missed as well. So my job is to also extend some thank yous. I won't take a long time since we've said thank you a bunch already during the lunch. But I want to restate that a lot of what you all enjoy today is through the um, services of volunteers. Our board of directors, our program committee, the members of our development committee, and the members of our communications committee, which are all part of the NANOG um, incorporation and, and sort of charter in terms of how we operate works because of the volunteer time of all of these individuals. So um, I certainly, as the executive director here, greatly appreciate being able to uh, get on the phone with a volunteer that has a very <laughs> busy day job, but to be able to make um, their time available to me to uh, work on NANOG issues on your behalf is, is greatly important. And I pitch that um, we'll be doing elections to fill some of these positions the, this coming October. More information on that later. But again, truly an appreciation to all those folks on the committees and the board. Um, I wanted to make sure that I called out some email messages to make sure, or email addresses, excuse me, to make sure that you all were aware that there's help besides just the registration staff. So nanog-support is an email address, email list that you're all very familiar with, and you can always send questions there. It might take a while to get some answers, um, as that's generally the registration and administrative staff. Speaker support is the email list that our presenters are well aware of in terms of any presentations or content issues. Nanog Eng is a list that's been in production for a while, but I want to call out that there's some folks in the back of the room or to the side of the room, which is our network engineering group. They're the folks who build the network, support the uh, webcast for the meeting, and they're online as well. Should you have any network or technical issues, you can send a message there and uh, get taken care of. Sponsors here at the meeting are greatly important to us, and so as sponsors, should you have any questions, uh, there's an email list for you. 
The color badges have been identified many times this morning and at lunch, so just pointing out again that if you don't want to email and you don't know who we are, you don't want to read a badge, you can find a colored ribbon on our badges. The NANOG meetings are really important and you help to support them through your registration fees to come to this meeting, but as one of our community members, past board member, reminds all of us, we have been able to keep the registration fee down to attend our meetings for a number of years, in large part because of these sponsors and their commitment <coughs> to NANOG. Uh, Verizon Tiramark for coming forward and being willing to host this meeting. It was a financial contribution, greatly appreciated. NTTA, VeriSign, Google, and Netflix um, are what we call premium sponsors. And so those folks give us financial commitment on an annual basis to help with operations of NANOG meetings on your behalf. Aaron, Dine, and Server Central provide us infrastructure resources and support. So all of these folks keep NANOG running. Special thank you to RIPE and Comcast. Dave's going to explain a little bit more about the, the RIPE Atlas project, but I wanted to make sure that I acknowledge the fact that our colleagues at RIPE were uh, gracious enough to let their project come to North America and to Comcast for actually donating some gear and some staff time to us. I also wanted to openly acknowledge that we received it, just a request. I put a request out there that we, NANOG, needed some routers to support our meeting network environment. Um, we own our connectivity to the hotel and the actual router uh, that delivers network connectivity and the router we had was getting old and uh, we, we needed a new one. So we put a a quiet call out there and uh, just so pleased that both Cisco and Juniper have donated brand new routers to NANOG on your behalf. So thank you to them. Thank you to Aaron for the ongoing support that they provide to the North American Network Operators Group. And, and there's so many ways that we have to thank Aaron. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail other than to say there are two, Aaron and NANOG are two separate organizations and Aaron recognizes recognizes the importance of the operator forum and does everything they can to support us whenever we ask. A uh, little diagram here, you can also find it on the network page, which gives you a flavor of the work and the effort that goes into building the network topology here um, on site at, at every venue, and this diagram changes a little bit. I am not a network engineer, so I'm not going to sit here and answer uh, any questions you might have. It's on the network. Statistics are also um, on the network page. And if you have the need to want to ask more questions or see what's going on, that's what the NANOG Inch Group or the badges of staff that are network engineers can help you with. Um, the important element that I wanted to say before I turn the mic over is that while we take care of the on-site LAN environment, the host actually works to provide connectivity into the hotel. So outside of the border here out to the cloud, we count on the host to do, and Verizon, Terramark, um, for the sixth time, has stepped forward and said, we're happy to do that on your behalf. Um, so that's... Uh, very important to us. With that said, I'm going to turn over to our host, um, Verizon Terramark. Guy is here, and he will give you a little bit of a background on Verizon and why they chose to help support this meeting that we're all here for. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's Guy Tall. I just started uh, with Verizon Terramark uh, three months ago today. So um, first of all, I would just like to say that we're very pleased to be able to host the NANA conference again for the sixth time. Uh, we're going to start and end with a bunch of thank yous. So first thank you goes to GTT uh, for providing the V4 and V6 transit for the conference. Uh, Betty Burke, for all of her work that she does with the NANOG uh, organization, 
the Terramark team that made it possible uh, to provide all the connectivity and all the logistics support. Uh, of course, the steering and program committees that make all these uh, conferences possible. I have two obligatory maps for you. Um, the first is our network map, and um, I was actually surprised when, e even during the interview process, uh, that there were actually as many um, ter former Terramark data centers and the, the breadth of the network. I'd always thought of Terramark as being, you know, mostly like a LADAM, you know, centric sort of company. Um, but, you know, I was really surprised that there was Dallas and Denver and Europe and so we, uh, we updated our network map and we'll be putting this online pretty soon. Our second uh, obligatory map for you is, um, and also to kind of discuss um, the evolution of the Verizon and, and uh, Terramark acquisition is our data center map. So not only do we have all those data centers that are on the network map, but you know, when Verizon acquired Terramark, they realized that Terramark has expertise in managing data centers. So now, all of, there, there's three different classifications of data centers within the, the former Verizon world. Um, so now we have all of the premium and former Terramark data centers on this map. And again, I was just completely surprised by the breadth of the, of the um, portfolio there. <coughs> So to discuss a little bit more about the uh, transfer of ownership of some of the assets at, uh, at Terramark, uh, I just wanted to kind of go over, you know, how the evolution um, is and where, where we're at today. So originally we had Terramark standalone, now it was th then it became Terramark a Verizon company, now it's Verizon Terramark, you know, what's in the future, you know, probably only our marketing guys know. Um, we've had changes in leadership, um, but they've all remained within, you know, the former Terramark group. So for everybody that had concern about, you know, how the assets would be managed, um, you know, the idea right now is still that, you know, Terramark folks will be managing, you know, the Terramark portfolio. Um, it's a part of a much larger organization at Verizon Enterprise Services. Um, there's a lot of back end that's being incorporated right now that hopefully should make, you know, everything within the company easier. Um, last year, uh, when Dave Newton was up here, uh, he was talking about the 2013 investment in our peering platforms, and so I just wanted to update everybody on what's going on with that. Uh, we operate three internet exchanges, uh, Miami, Sao Paulo, and Istanbul. Um, so part of what we've been doing in the last year is uh, we actually removed the Force Tens out of the Miami Switch Fabric. There are no longer Force Tens in the Miami Switch Fabric. Uh, we're running Brocade MLXs now. Uh, we have a commitment to get route servers installed before the end of the year. And um, after actually attending RIPE a couple of weeks ago, I, I started to look into the IXP manager that uh, Inex has, and it looks uh, very promising. So we're going to, you know, bring the Noda Exchange of Miami uh, into the 21st century a little bit. Um, we don't currently ha publish our stats, but we're getting pretty close to 500 gigs. And one of the things that we're going to do is become a lot more transparent. And so when we get to the point where we can publish this, we'll, we'll start publishing our stats on a regular basis. And aside from that, you know, everything else is kind of business as usual. Uh, we're hosting uh, the social event tomorrow night. Uh, just a quick note on that is that um, we'll be leaving here at 8.30. We arranged for a parade. So for the, those of you that were at the GPF last year, hopefully it won't be raining. <laughs> and we'll actually get a chance to do the parade. Um, we'll be at the Natchez Steamboat and... Um, we're going to leave the boat in the dock. Originally, the idea was to take it out, but you know, if we have some stragglers coming in or people that want to leave early, um, that's going to be okay. Uh, we have some prizes to give away for those of you that fancy yourself gamblers. And um, aside from that, it should be uh, should be a good time. So, lastly, I just again, I want to thank everybody here for coming. It's good to see you know 
large full rooms like this. Uh, New Orleans is a great city. And, um, you know, again, special thanks to everybody for participating in the BOFs and coming up here and speaking and giving presentations. So if you need to reach me, my contact details are there. And uh, aside from that, I'll hand it back to Dave. Thank you. Sorry, just waiting for slides. So, uh, who in the room has a ripe Atlas probe on their network? Raise your hand. At, anywhere, at home, in your office, plugged in your coffee maker, wherever it may be. Um, I do as well. Uh, it's a fantastic project. Um, you know, those of you who don't know uh, who RIPE is, just real quick, uh, RIPE is kind of the conglomerate of what we are, Nanog, and Aaron put together. So they operate the, the regional registry for Europe uh, as well as run a conference that's very similar to Nanog and do the same sort of outreach for the region that, the, uh, that they operate in. So those of you who are familiar with Ripe Atlas, you know what it does. Those of you who are not, uh, we've seen, we saw a presentation uh, last Nanog regarding Hurricane Sandy from the Ripe Atlas people that used a ton of data, and actually my probe was featured in there, uh, used a ton of data about uh, network availability and the failure modes that we saw in various networks uh, around the world because of uh, Hurricane Sandy. And that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg of what those probes can do and the kind of uh, information that they can get out of them. So it's kind of an eye chart of a slide, but you know, it measures a lot, and they are very extensible. They're adding new test types all the time. Uh, you can use it to run your own tests if you purchase credits to do that, and there's ways of doing that both, you know, via currency and as well as running your own probe. So, uh, you know, I mentioned the second one here, which is the effects of Hurricane Sandy, but you can see how broad uh, the data from these boxes can be used, how broadly it can be used for all sorts of different things. Um, you know, the, the deboganifying, it's a tricky word to say, of 128-16 uh, uh, presented a ton of really interesting usable data and was extremely helpful to the people who ended up with those prefixes. So um, it's, the, the newer ones are slightly larger than the older ones. Uh, the, they are powered by 500 milliamps of USB power, which is, you know, an iPhone charger or any other standard USB charger. Mine's plugged into the back of my router because my router happens to have a USB port. Um, runs DHCP uh, and really just needs an outbound path to the internet. You know, you can DMZ it off if you don't want it to be able to talk internally, not that that's really a use case for it, but, uh, you know, those who are concerned about security, it really only needs outbound access to the internet. Uh, if you would like one, please take one, but set it up. Please don't leave it in a, sitting in a drawer somewhere. These things are, are cheap, but they're not free to ripe, and so it's kind of a waste if you take one and don't actually use it. Uh, all of that said, the table where if you'd like to get one, register to get one, uh, is right outside the door directly across the hallway here. Uh, there are one or two representatives there who can answer questions, who can sign you up, who can give you a probe. Um, and, you know, we want to really thank Comcast for setting that up. They really enabled getting uh, Ripe out here to do this. Uh, it's the first time that we've had these here, and uh, I'm really excited to see what that does for adoption of these probes in the U.S. There's already a bunch deployed, but if you look at their deployment maps of the U.S. versus Europe and even versus Asia, there's a lot more concentration elsewhere. So it would be great to, uh, to see them on a lot more networks out here in the U.S. And on that note, uh, we'd like to jump into the actual main program. Uh, Sasha.